So let's do the module three of chapter six, manufacturing process. And in this, we are going to see how to design and analyze an assembly line. So one of the things in assembly line, as you saw a video of the assembly line of Ford, is that it is a conveyor belt and the product is actually moving on the conveyor belt. So people are working at different workstations so that it can be done. So we're trying to find out how, to, how, how many workstations you can do and what is the optimal time that you need to have the assembly done. Okay, so for that, the first thing that we're going to talk about is what is called a cycle time, a workstation cycle time. A cycle time is a time interval in which the conveyor belt moves from one station to another. Okay, so basically the time between successive units coming off the line is a cycle time and what we're going to do is use this cycle time to find out how many workstations that we can design and then we will balance the assembly line so when i mean what i mean by balancing is we're going to make sure that the cycle time is met and the idle time is minimized okay so let's say I have a process to do. For instance, I'm going to put the wheels on, uh, on a chassis in, in a car. So it takes X number of minutes. Okay. Then the next thing is to demount the tires. And that is going to take Y number of minutes. The time between the putting the uh, wheels and then mounting the tires on top of the wheels i don't want any idle time in between that is what i'm talking about okay and that is that i'm going to minimize that to maybe zero if possible and that is the assembly line balancing that i'm planning to do so to do that i have to make sure that the workstations are next to each other and there shouldn't be too much wastage of time in moving the product from one workstation to another. Okay. And to do that, we're going to come up with a diagram. And in the diagram, we're going to look at the precedence relationship. So that means what is the order in which the tasks are going to be done? And we're going to use this order to come out with this diagram. So let's do a problem so we can see exactly how to do this. Now, before we do the problem, I want to just go through some equations. One is the cycle time is the production time per day. The production time per day, the total production time per day over the required output per day in units. So if the production time is, let's say, eight hours in a day, and I want 40 cars, so that is, the cycle time is going to be eight divided by 40, okay? The second thing is, I want to know the theoretical minimum number of workstations. So if I, add all the task times to get the total task time and then divide that by cycle time that gives me a minimum number of workstations and i want to use this minimum number of workstations as the benchmark for this whole assembly line balancing okay we're going to have also another one more equation which is called efficiency Efficiency is the total task time divided by the actual number of workstations that you came up with, that the NT, the NT times the cycle time, the total task time divided by the actual number of workstations multiplied by works, uh, the cycle time. That gives you the efficiency. 
So we have to find this efficiency and see whether everything is fine, whether it is satisfac satisfactory or not. That is what we are planning to do. So let's start with the question with the with the problem. So I have this um, where I'm going to have um, make a wagon. So this is where I'm going to make a wagon, and it's going to take me 45 minutes to position the rear axle support and then fasten the four screws to the nuts and that is my task A. Okay. The task B is inserting a rear axle. The task C is tightening the rear axle support screws to the nuts and so on and so forth. And I have all these A to K tasks. Okay. I need to make a, make a Using this data, I'm going to make this map, this one here. So how do you do that? So first of all, I'm going to see, I'm going to have A here. So I'm going to put A. And the B here depends on A. Okay. So I'm going to put B and I'm going to put this arrow. The C the C basically is depending on B. So I'm going to put C here and I'm going to put this arrow. So B is dependent on A and C is dependent on B. Okay. And I'm going to put those number of the time, the task time, 45 seconds, 11 seconds, which is given here, 45, 11, 9. I'm going to put it over here. Let's go to D. D does not have any precedence or anything that it relies on. So D is an independent one. So I'm going to make it as a separate task. E depends on D. So I'm going to put E and then I'm going to putting this. Uh, I'm connecting that with an arrow. You can see that if you go along, see this F depends on C. So I'm going to put the F here and put the C there and then put an arrow to the C. G depends on C. So I'm going to put a G there and I'm going to put an arrow over there. H depends on E. So E is here. So I'm going to put a H there and I'm going to put the arrow here. I depends on E. So I'm going to have the E here, I here. And I'm going to connect it to E. J depends on F, G, H, and I. So I'm going to put the I here and I'm going to connect all four of them F, G, and H, and I to I to J. And K is runs after J. So I'm going to put a K here and I'm going to put the arrow to K from J. Basically what this means is that B cannot be done unless A is finished. E cannot be done unless D is finished. C cannot be done unless B is finished. H cannot be done unless E is finished. I cannot be done without, without finishing E. F and G cannot be started unless you finish C. J cannot be started unless I finish F, G, H, and I. And K cannot be started unless I finish J. That's all it means. So now I'm going to come up with this precedence diagram. This is the precedence diagram. I'm going to come up with that. Okay. Now, using this precedence diagram, I'm going to find how many workstations I can come up with. So to do that, the first thing that I'm going to do is to calculate the cycle time. The cycle time is production time per day over output per day. The production time is given as 420 minutes. This is the production time, 420 minutes, which is basically seven hours. So I have seven hours. I'm going to convert the seven hours seven hours to seconds. 
okay so to convert seven hours to seconds which is 420 minutes which is 25,200 seconds that's what I'm doing I'm converting into seconds and most of the time you want to convert it into seconds okay because that is the lowest form of time that we have so in any in most of the problems unless I tell you convert it into seconds I want to make 500 wagons in a day okay so that is my total number of wagons in a day so the production time per day is 25,200 seconds and the output per day is 500 wagons so that comes to 50.4 seconds per wagon I'm going to make sure that my workstations are limited to 50 seconds so 50.4 seconds so let's go to this diagram Bef the one thing I want to do is to see how many workstations I can get out of this diagram that's what I'm planning to do I'm going to put two rules here and this rule holds good for all problems we are going to do the first rule is the longest task time is what you're going to consider first and also you're going to consider the largest number of following tasks okay so for instance task a has got one two three four five six tasks ahead of it whereas d has got one two three four five tasks ahead of it okay so i'm going to use rule one first the longest task time so between a and d the longest task time is d and that is 50 seconds i cannot add any more to it i cannot add a to it because 50 plus 45 is 95 seconds i have to be within this 50 seconds so i cannot have these two together I cannot have D and B together because it becomes 61 seconds, 50 plus 11. I cannot have D and E together because it is 50 plus 50 is, 40, is 65. All of them are over 50 seconds, so I cannot have that. So D is a separate, is a separate workstation. Okay. Now my second, I'm, this is my first work, was workstation. My second workstation, I'm going to go with A, okay, because that is the longest task in all these things. The longest task is 45 seconds. Now, I cannot add 45 plus 11 because it is 56, 45 plus 15 because it is 60. So this has to be also a separate one, and this is going to be my second workstation. Okay, now I'm going to go to which one should I choose? Should I choose B or should I choose E? The longest task time. So the longest task time is 15 over 11. So I'm going to choose B, E. I'm going to choose E because it has got 15 seconds. Okay. So if I'm choosing E, I, I can choose this the longest, but, but the problem is the second rule. The second rule says the largest number of following tasks. So between B and E, B has got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and E has got 1, 2, 3, 4. So B has got more tasks ahead of it. So therefore, I'm going to choose B, not E. We'll come to E later. So I'm going to choose B, which is 11 seconds. Now, which is the next one I should choose, C or E? Now the longest rule time takes place. So I, this is longer, so I'm going to choose E because it is longer than C or H or I. So I'm going to choose B and E, I've chosen now. The total is 11 plus 15, that is 26. I still have 24 seconds that I can work with. So I'm going to choose the next one, which is C. Okay, why is that? Because I have C, if I can, between C and H and I, I'm going to use C simply because it is not.